Hello boys and girls, welcome to another episode of Folks Brow. Today on the bench we have a DSTV decoder, a DSTV explorer. One of my colleagues bought it to me. Apparently he had a, a lightning strike in the area and now his decoder is dead. It's one of those with the power pack and uh, the little uh, connector that goes into it. So it's probably a 12 volt or a 9 volt or something external supply. I asked him about the power pack. He said he tried a new one that's working with his new decoder and the new decoder is working fine. This one is not. So I thought it'd be interesting to take a look inside and uh, let's fix what's wrong with it. Um, they do use anti-tamper screws so uh, you do need some rather uh, fancy little Torx drivers with a, with a hole in, in the middle to open it. Not a problem, you can buy them at your local hardware store. Uh, our esteemed Minister of Governance and fuck knows what has decided that uh, they want to continue the alcohol and uh, cigarette ban until level one. I think uh, she's bitten off more than she can chew with that. Either way, not our problem at the moment. So let's open uh, the decoder and we'll have a look, see inside and see what we can see. Right, here we have our DSTV decoder on the bench. All I've done is this uh, shielding I've just taken off and the front panel, the power switches and the channel change and volume and all that, I've just taken that out the casing. As we can see, I'm just going to hang that down here. There's not really much to it. They have a Western Digital 2 terabyte hard drive inside. So this is obviously some sort of PVR uh, product of Thailand, 19th of September 2014. 2 terabyte Western Digital W. D20 EURX for those of you playing at home. I don't have the power adapter for this thing. I don't have a power adapter that fits it. So first things first, let's see what is what. Our power adapter is down in there. So let's put it on our multimeter on resistance and let's just measure the two contacts there let's see if we can get this a bit better in for you I will measure around the camera and let's see if we've got a short on our positive and negative Eleven point and charging, so there's definitely no short between the positive and negative. Let's see which is our negative rail if I measure it to the case. Well, that is definitely our negative rail on the right. This middle one is our positive. So there's no short in here. So why don't we put power on it? And let us let me switch my bench power supply on. And we'll put power on the thing and see what it does. I have a suspicion that this is going to be none of another one of those I uh, didn't check properly things. I think looking at the board I've just dusted it out there's nothing really wrong with it our RF section nice and shielded 
for our satellite coming in, LNB and all that sort of stuff. Not really much to these. There's a Broadcom chip in there. Uh, yeah, nothing really fancy to this. So let me get my bench power supply on. And what we'll do is put power on this thing. So that's just going into the negative of my power supply. We'll clamp it to the chassis. Positive lead here, yeah, we do. I'm going to set it to 12 volts output. And we'll limit the current to, it says the power supply is capable of 3.75 amp. Oh, we'll just leave it on. 3 amps should be fine. And what I'm going to do, I'll switch the output on. I'm just going to probe onto the positive. Nice spark there. <laughs> oh no. 12 volt, 0.6 amp, 660 milliamp. And you can't see it, so I'm going to take the power off. Let's just <laughs> get something to insulate. This cloth should be fine. Obviously, we don't want our screen touching anything. And let's see if you see what I see. Let me just get around the camera here and not uh, ruin your shot. You see? I'm not left-handed, so this is not working very well. Let's see if I can just get it in from that side. Our power LED is on. It's gone to green. And it's going through its cycle. And it's gone into boot. I hear the hard drive starting up. And it's got an error code. One something 8D. It's obviously because the card is not in. So there's definitely nothing wrong with this decoder. So what I said suspect is when my colleague had his uh, lightning strike it actually just took out the power supply and he went and got a whole brand new decoder for well for nothing for the sake of it um, I do have the card so I'm curious if we put the card in I think the card goes in down here If we put the card in, I don't have DSTV at home, so because to me it's a waste of money, but right up, we've put our card in, our power supply output is on, so let me just short that one there. Relays kick in. Obviously it won't boot up because there is no satellite plugged into it.
boot. Oh, it says load. Now that I can see it from the other side. There you go. It says load. It's now pulling up to 900 milliamp. This is clearly not going to load anything, so I'm just going to switch my power supply off. Cool. So, <laughs> unfortunately, there is nothing wrong with this decoder. So, clearly the power supply went, and that is what I expect to take the brunt of it. I, if the power supply is well built, I definitely don't see any surge coming through here. So a power supply that costs maybe a hundred bucks versus the decoder, that's another 900. I think my friend Nassim blew his money. But anyway, nice to see nothing wrong with the decoder. Not very much to it, like I said. You've got your power, which should already be uh, nice and smooth. Some little capacitors. What are they actually using in here? Brand wise. I can't even see. It looks like some no name. No name brand rubbish. Um, hard drive, obviously, and then here the bigger processor to do all the, the heavy lifting and everything else. Yep, not really much to it. Anyway, we'll set the shot up for the end. Sorry that wasn't more entertaining, but yeah, it is what it is. Sometimes we just get very lucky. There you have it, boys and girls. We come to the end of another video. Um, <laughs> sorry it wasn't more exciting than that, but yeah, it just goes to show next time you think your uh, device is blown, check the power supply first. Otherwise it can become a very expensive exercise. Um, not much in a DSTV coder, just the Obviously, the, the processor and its co-processors to do the heavy heavy lifting for, for whatever is going on in there, the decoding and whatever. Um, yeah. Anyway, as always, I, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you had fun having a look inside. I expected more. Not much in it, really. As always, take care. Be safe, and we'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.